everyone, Mocha Bear here. Welcome back to Mocha Bear's Hobby Den. Today's video is another Kickstarter project unboxing. Shall we get started? Today's video is about a project that I felt very interested in felt kind of connected to because of situation with my family and it ties into tabletop role-playing this project is called limitless heroics better worlds via dice and disabilities 5e comprehensive game mechanics for including characters with disabilities mental illness and neurodivergence in fifth edition created by dale critchley i apologize if i am mispronouncing your last name if you're watching this or anyone who does know, please comment down below and correct me on how to properly pronounce the name. Okay, so the goal was $10,000. We ended up making over 85000 with over 2,000 backers. Story. When you play a tabletop role-playing game like 5e, you want to be the hero. The world is different for you having been there. Better. What if you could make the real world better by playing an RPG? That's what Limitless Heroics is all about. Limitless Heroics is the most comprehensive disability compendium ever created for a tabletop role-playing game. For 5th edition, it provides 450 plus traits, game mechanics for nearly every condition or trait in existence, plus some fantasy traits, because that's what you should expect in a world with magic, with 4 severity degrees and 6 frequencies. With 1 to 6 traits per character, or more, that's 64,800 plus combinations with the option to add more. It's a free sample trait, Blindness. 78 random tables to choose or generate the traits, their degree of severity, and their frequency. Get a free Ashcan sample with all tables from the book. 93 plus new magic items and an online random generator for thousands more. Nearly every trait includes mundane and magic assistive options. Get a free example of assistive magic items, braces of blades. Uh, note since we hit our first stretch goal, this has increased to 113 plus new magic items. Four new monster stat blocks because sometimes the disability or assistive device is a creature. Three new spells because sometimes assistance comes from a spell book. Thousands of real world examples so players can learn more and better represent the traits. And tutorials. Opening articles discuss how and why to implement these options, how to discuss it with your players, and common tropes to avoid. You have all the tools here to run an inclusive campaign. Our website will have a free random generator to simplify determining character traits but you'll need the book for the description and mechanics, or you can use the included tables to choose or roll manually. We will also have a free random generator to create thousands of new magic items, and wizard backers can add their names to the list of magic item creators. We talked to dozens of people with diverse conditions to make sure our game mechanics represented their experiences, and see this update for news about even more. So you can click on it and it'll tell you. All writers, editors, and artists hired for this book are disabled, neurodivergent, and or have mental or chronic illness. A gray-skinned half-orc barbarian with pink ethereal faces speaking to it. Representation of intrusive thoughts. Oh, that's cool. Book accessibility. Dyslexia-friendly layout, fully screen reader accessible, and indexed audio version included with every purchase. Real-world benefits. We believe that this resource will help you normalize disabilities in your life and the lives of other players. Non-disabled people can sometimes feel uncomfortable around disabled people or don't know how to talk or act. This resource allows you to practice in an imaginary world to equip you with empathy and skills to feel increasingly comfortable doing that in the real world. And those with disabilities now have a way to represent their experience in-game to feel empowered and to help others see them more clearly. Imagine what we could communicate to the world when all those actual play Twitch streams include disabled characters. For those of you who are curious as to what I meant by this connects to me, um, allow me to explain. Uh, and for those who have seen my uh, Harry Potter Forbidden Forest experience, uh, you might notice my mother uses a wheelchair. When I was in high school, my mother found out she had a growth on her brainstem. Doctors were able to surgically remove it. Um, however, doing so ended up causing damage. So she is now at the point where she is required to use a wheelchair for most of her movement. Um, thankfully, she's 
much better than they thought she would be. She's able to get out of her chair on her own to get herself in and out of bed and uh, other seats and whatnot. Uh, She's even able to do uh, physical therapy, horseback riding. But ever since she had that surgery, I completely had my perspective on physical disabilities and other disabilities changed. And it really made me more conscious about how I thought and things I take for granted. So when I saw this project, instantly I was I was on board 100%. Let alone to support what they're doing with it, but to be able to implement it into my my games, my stories to try to help spread awareness. It's so as you can see this is on a personal level for me. So before we go any further, Thank you for this project. I am so grateful that you've done this, and I know so many other people are as well. Let's continue on. Uh, This is a movement. Limitless Heroics is more than an RPG book. It's a petition. Back this project, and you communicate to every game publisher on Earth that disabled people exist and can easily be included in their games, and that the customers want that representation, and that accessibility and representation are necessary core features for future projects. Imagine companies and organizations seeing the success of this movement beyond the RPG community and how that would affect their decisions in the future. Imagine how you as RPG players who work in every industry can work for change to overcome ableism because of what you and your players learned while rolling dice at the RPG table. Once you push us over our goal and we get this book into your hands, we will make it available through other distributors for a high price but the overwhelming success of this campaign will speak volumes to the world, and when you back it, you will forever get to say you were a part of it. Imagining is what we do best, but we can use fantasy to change reality. Maybe RPGs have some real-world magic after all. Back this project now, make it happen, and mark this day on your calendar and social media as the day you helped change the world. So here you see the pledge tiers. Um, $1 was Monk, it's Make a Difference, you get access to add-ons. Uh, Sorcerer was $25, make a difference, add-on access, as well as PDF and audio. The Warlock, which is the version I went with, was $30. I wish I could have done more. Um, Gave me the add-ons, PDF, audio, and the print option. The Wizard gave you all that, as well as name a magic item. There was a Shopkeeper option, which is the same price as the Wizard, $75. It was giving you five copies of the print option, the PDF, and the audio, so for stores. Uh, $200 was the Bard, gave you all of the previous items as well as create a character, and then $500, the Paladin, gave you all of that as well as deluxe create a character. So I wish I could have done at least the Bard, but at the time that this project was up, I was low on funds, so I had to settle for what I could afford. And like I said, the only regret is that I could not afford more. All right, so here's the stretch goals. Uh, $25,000 was the complications and prosthesis. Prosthesis. There we go. Uh, once we hit 25000 we will add additional complications and magical prosthetics. Some experiences are not traits of various conditions, but complications that result from them, such as infections, concussions, secondary depression, and intoxication. Once we hit this goal, we will add 20 complications to the book and 20 magical prosthetics. Prosthesis, sorry. Uh, $30,000 gave us 10 NPCs. So our character creators will add 10 NPCs with full backgrounds, personality, details, disabilities, and artwork to the book. Uh, these are in addition to the characters created for the created character and deluxe created character rewards. Uh, $40,000, the glass painter's daughter. Uh, we will include a one-shot adventure, The Glass Painter's Daughter, by Alicia Marie, which explores these concepts in an adventure environment. Uh, $50,000 was service animals, so they will include a chapter to implement service animals into the game, both real-world and fantasy animals, including rules for training and how to use them. That is awesome. This section will be written by Brittany Hay with service animal trainer and user consultation. Extra stretch goal, surprise stretch goal, 85,000. You got 24 more magic item illustrations. Uh, 100,000, you get 100 plus character book. Uh, Extra magic items, 
The core book contains 96 assistive magic items and spells. If we get more than 96 backers at wizard level or above, or via add-ons, we will create more magic items and spells for the book to accommodate the additional interest, which I believe we definitely reached. Uh, shipping was through our drive through RPG. Uh, content trigger warning. I do need to read this for you all. This book contains descriptions and game mechanics for nearly every physical, mental, and emotional condition in existence and a few that don't exist, including physical, mental, and emotional trauma and all manner of illnesses, including an entry on phobias and mention or illustrations of possible phobic triggers. If it can happen to your mind and or body, it's probably here. For those who would have difficulty with any of that, please be aware of that likelihood. Use the table of contents to avoid difficult sections or give this book to a trusted friend and let them comb through it for the details you need to build your character while skipping past the traumatic traumatic wow well, and let them comb through it for the details you need to build your character while skipping past the traumatic entries. Creators we have Dale Critchley again I apologize uh, if I'm mispronouncing your last name please correct me in the comments down below. Uh, owners Wormworks Publishing uh, we've got Joey Martin, the layout editor, uh, Naomi Hazlett. If there's any other names that I mispronounce, please do not hesitate to correct me in the comments down below. It's one of my pet peeves. I hate mispronouncing people's names. I find it disrespectful. The copy editor and sensitivity consultant. Uh, Melissa Critchley, sensitivity consultant. Simon Arnold, sensitivity consultant. Matthew Rickman, Sensitivity Consultant. Alicia Marie. Oh, I actually follow her on social media. Okay, I it didn't I didn't realize that she had a hand in this. Uh, that's really cool. Brittany Hay. Uh, artists we got Kalman Andrasovsky. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I most likely butchered that, and I apologize. And there's additional artists here, additional sensitivity consultants, press, risk and challenges. Okay. If you're still with me, thank you. Uh, this, like I said, this project was just on a very personal level for me. So I'm, just, I'm excited to get into it. So without further ado, here it is. It has got some nice weight to it. Uh, let's see if I can do this as it's supposed to happen. Because you have a little tab here. Well, you know. Well, you know what you say. What you say. Well, you know. Uh, Y'all are not ready for this. Look at that. Oh my. Hold up. Wow. Look at this. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous and stunning. What does that say on the front? Luminous Heroics, including characters with disabilities, mental illness, neurodivergence, 5th edition, Wormworks Publishing. My goodness. And then here's the back with some more artwork on the back. With her prosthetic leg. That is so cool. I have to read the back to you. Welcome. No, really. You're welcome here. Representation of disabilities, neurodiversity, and mental illness in role-playing games is rare. This is your chance to change that. Limitless Heroics is the most comprehensive disability compendium ever created for a tabletop role-playing game, reflecting nearly every physical, mental, and neurological trait in the real world, plus fantasy conditions like you'd expect in a magical world, plus tutorials and guides to represent them respectfully. We believe that this resource will help you normalize disabilities in your life and the lives of other players. Non-disabled people can sometimes feel uncomfortable around disabled people or don't know how to talk or act. This resource allows you to practice in an imaginary world to equip you with empathy and skills to feel increasingly comfortable doing that in the real world. And those with disabilities now have a way to represent their experience in-game to feel empowered and to help others see them more clearly. This book has been examined by over 900 people to make sure it reflects their lived experiences and the entire creative team of writers, editors, and artists are disabled, neurodiverse, and or mentally ill. Fantasy worlds are based on the real world, but modified with magical influences. Our disabled, neurodiverse, and mentally ill friends and family, we're glad you're in our real world, and we want you in our fantasy worlds too. 
Absolutely. Whole, I was not expecting this. This is an encyclopedia. My word. Ab mad respect. Absolutely. Absolute mad respect here. Okay, so it's got a little insert here. Let me show that to you before I read it. In loving memory of my dad, Bill Critchley, you always told me how proud you were of me, but you will always be my hero, making lives better through role-playing games. On the cover, our heroes fighting the Hydra represent only some of the variety of traits in this book. The Paladin has a prosthetic arm to assist with their amputation. The Barbarian rages from their wheelchair, mobile without needing to rely on their legs. The Ranger, more accustomed to an aquatic environment just as someone in the real world may be more comfortable in a quieter or darker sensory environment, finds ways to compensate and keep fighting using sensory filtering devices. The wizard's vitiligo may not be thought of as a disability, nor should it be, yet many in the real world experience severe discrimination due to an unusual skin pigment. How many celebrities, corporate executives, or politicians do you know with visibly irregular skin? It's the table of contents. So just give you an example, here's some of the contents. Here's how the text appears. So here's some QR codes. If you're able to, please scan those QR codes. Take a look. So there's quite a bit in here that I want to read, but it would take too long. It would make this video way too long. Um, so what I will do, not might, I will, is do another video just reading some of these things. Like here's a section with more information. Uh, here's a page of what this book is, a page of what this book is not. But here is an important thing that I will read more in depth for you later on, but I need to I need to read this to you now. It's what to avoid. Villainous disability, bitter disability, cosmetic disability, helpless disability, inspirational disability, metaphorical disability, one-dimensional disability, fragile body magic mind, ableist monsters, and magical cures and disability as an obstacle. Like I said, there is so much to this book. And the text, like what you saw in the table of contents, that is the exact size of most of the text here. If it's not that size, it's bigger and in bold. Photosensitivity, moisture imbalance, paralysis and numbness, brain fog. There's just so much vertigo. There is so much in here. Phobias, uh, service animals. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. Here's a picture of one of these service animals. A service gelatinous cube. A service gelatinous cube. I love it. There's a service owl bear. Guys. You got emotional support animal class. It's a little dragon. It's a little dog. Magic assistance. And I like that, like up here. It tells you at the top of the page. Tells you what chapter or appendix at least and what is in it. So you're not looking through trying to figure out what it is. You got assistive equipment. Here's one. Uh Zavari's oozing limb. It's a prosthetic limb. Like look. Look at the font, the size of the font. That is awesome. Gives you full stat block for it. Gives you the illustration, traits, all of that. The assistive equipment has its own table with prices, the weight, their descriptions. And here's the magic item tables that you can roll for. Here's NPCs. Uh, we'll read the first one. Adelaide is a paladin. Medium humanoid human, lawful good, transgender woman, she, her, armor class 18, hit points 49, speed 30, 18 strength, 12 dex, 16 con, 10 intelligence, 10 wisdom, 16 charisma, skills of animal handling plus 3 and insight plus 3, persuasion plus 6, survival plus 3, passive perception of 10, languages are common and dwarvish, 
Uh, challenge rating five. So your spell casting challenge divinity, divine sense, lay on hands pool, sacred weapon, turn the unholy. As an action, she can sense your friends and undead. Each fiend or undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet must attempt wisdom save. Failure, turn for one minute. Longsword. We've got on the next page. We've got traits, uh, background, personality, plot hooks. I'm going to read the background. I'm going to read the background. Adelaide grew up in a small village where she often had to mask her true self from others. She hid her struggles as she went about the first 30 years of her life, attempting to be the person she thought her family, wife, and community wanted her to be. She struggled silently, alone at night as thoughts raced through her mind of what would happen if others knew how she truly felt. On the eve of her 30th birthday, after several nights of little to no sleep, Adelaide roamed the village looking for a sign of what to do next. She was tired of being tired. As she wandered, Adelaide met a cleric on the road. She traveled with the cleric from one side of town to the other. The cleric spoke of a church devoted to true expression, freedom of self, and protecting others from anyone who would deny others this choice. As Adelaide listened, she felt herself yearning for what this deity had to offer. As they reached the edge of town, the cleric turned and offered to have Adelaide as a companion and to travel with her as Adelaide found herself. The cleric had seen through Adelaide's mask of contentment. Adelaide only hesitated a moment before choosing to join the cleric and the Church of Reflection. On this journey, Adelaide found herself growing both inside and out. Upon reaching the temple, she was ready to take her paladin oath as the woman she was always meant to be. And then let me go back to the previous uh, section before backgrounds on the same page. Uh, traits, there's actually acid reflux. Baseless emotion, which is restlessness triggered by social situation. Learning disability, dyscalculia, chronic, um, I do not know how to pronounce that word. Sat here for 10 seconds trying to pronounce it and not coming out right. Uh, phobia, entomophobia, fear of insects, okay. Uh, and then uh, sleep disruptions, insomnia. And it gives you a list of what they do, like what uh, effects they have on the characters. Uh, personality. Adelaide is a very socially anxious person and speaks with a soft voice when it comes to matters of herself. However, when it comes to protecting others who are in need, she is firm and outspoken. She travels the world with a soft half-smile and an air of someone ready to face the world. Each day, she gives thanks to her deity and will encourage others to seek similar counsel when struggling. If someone asks, she is willing to listen and give what advice she can. I will have to do a more in-depth uh, look at these NPCs. Yo, there's even there's even a multi-class one, a druid fighter. Yes. Okay. Wow. I'm still going. I'm still. When it, where does this start? Okay. So NPCs run from page 382. Technically 383, because 382 is the uh, picture of the first NPC Adelaide. 597 is the last page for the NPCs. That is awesome. Then we've got um, an adventure, Horror of the Shade, written by Theo Kogod. Kogod, please correct me if you are watching this or anyone knows how to pronounce it. Please correct me in the comments down below. Uh, Horror of the Shade is a one-shot adventure designed for a party of four to six characters of levels five or six. Wow. Yes. I will 110% be doing a more in-depth review of this book. 110%. Dale Critchley, Wormworks Publishing. Yes. Yes, so much. I cannot say enough good things about what I have seen so far. I am definitely going to be spreading awareness of this to as many people as I can. Uh, there's probably going to be a, quite a few people that are going to get sick and tired of seeing it published. But absolutely. 110%. Beautiful artwork. Beautifully well done. You can tell that so much love and care was taken to get this done right. So if any more projects 
get made by Dale or Wormworks that I and I catch wind of it, like I see it. Hopefully, I get the notifications. You know, I am going to be promoting it so quickly. I will not be able to promote it fast enough. This, along with the Drakenheim factions, I am going to have a lot of work ahead of me, and I am super excited. Well, that is all for today. This video, I apologize for the length of this video, but I was not going to shortchange myself or you of this. This is something very important that needs to be shown to everybody. For now, that's it for today. Take care of yourselves, and until next time, hobby on.